What are the two items that would help everyone across the globe have greater success when answering Google's hypothetical questions? Transitions and space. Both of these items are huge struggle areas for my clients, and my best guess is that you're likely struggling with them too. In this video, I'm going to focus in on why are transitions in space so important, and definitely stay tuned to the end. We'll talk about how to deal with a more aggressive interviewer. So item one, the CFAS method. I quickly want to cover CFAS or else the rest of this video really isn't going to make sense. The CFAS method is the methodology, the structure you use for answering open-ended hypothetical questions. And it stands for C is clarify. So we're going to ask clarifying questions. F is the framework. This is basically establishing the key items and concepts we're going to focus in on to solve. A is assumptions. We need to make specific role-related assumptions to narrow our focus. And then S is solving. We're just solving for one concept at a time. So let's get into it. Item two is the what. Let's start with transitions. Transitions are the statements that we make throughout the CFAST method. And they're the glue and they truly help us build connectivity. They help us create better flow throughout our answers. And transitions are leading and guiding. So we're focusing in on our agenda and our strengths. This is the yin, but we also need the yang and this is building in the space after transitions. So in this case, space is literal. We need to build in space specifically in the form of silence to allow our interviewer to speak. So if they want to switch up our direction, take a different path, we give them the space to guide us. And talking about what they want to talk about, that will strongly enhance our likelihood of getting hired. So no space, no job. Item three, clarify. Let's dive right into it section by section. The tricky part about clarification is we can use a few transition statements. So typically the first transition statement is simply that we're going to ask clarifying questions. So we would state, there are a few items that I'd like to clarify. You're going to ask one to two questions and pause after. We have to see if we have an engaged audience and whether they're going to respond to us or not. But after a couple of questions, we'll probably want to group our questions and we'll use a transition statement such as, a few additional questions I have are, then once you've completed all your questions, typically three to five, you'll ask your interviewer, let's call her Sue, can you clarify any of these items for me? Then we're gonna pause for three to five seconds. It feels uncomfortable, it feels weird, but building in space for Sue is gonna be so important because we've just thrown a lot at her. Now, of course, we wanna read her body language. If she's just giving off the fact she's not gonna answer, we can move on and let's do that. Let's move on to item four, the framework. This is a huge challenge area for my clients. The transitions before and after the framework may be the most important. Before starting the framework, we wanna use a really casual transition phrase such as a few items we might wanna focus in on, some concepts we should explore. In order to solve a few items we may wanna discuss, are now you don't have to build in any space after that you can just dive right into listing out your framework concepts and be succinct think really 30 seconds or less not a lot of context now once you've listed out these concepts use the following transition statement sue i think we should start by focusing in on x but is there another area you want to focus in on pause You've just stated a number of concepts. Again, give Sue the time to decide whether she wants to switch up your direction or not. Typically, your interviewer will not change your path, but allowing them the space to do so is critical. Let's say your concept X is risk, but your interviewer is much more interested in talking about resources. Now, just by building in the space, we're talking about what our interviewer wants to talk about. Very critical. Item five, assumptions. In this part of your answer, the transitions will keep you much more organized and help you build strong alignment with your interviewer. So let's just stick with that concept of risk. The transition would sound something like, okay, Sue, if we're going to start by focusing in on risk, let's make a few assumptions. 
Again, no pause here. We're just going to dive into those assumptions and the transition statement afterwards would sound like, okay, we're going to take those assumptions and focus on risk. And the first step I would take is, and what is the value of these steps? Now we've mentioned risk three times. So this not only gets your interviewer connected to your focus area, but it also focuses your brain on tackling one item. Because a typical failure point, especially when we get to the solution, is that we're trying to solve for everything, but the framework has already established that for us. Item six, solution. One of the most common missteps that happens at the end of the solution, no transition statement at all, and while the framework transitions are critical, this one might be the most important. When you get to the end of your solution, ideally two minutes or less, you instantly create a strong solution by saying, Sue, I think it would be super interesting to dive a little bit more into concept A or concept B, or we could go back into one of those initial concepts I mentioned in C and talk a little bit more about that item. Is there one area that you prefer? So, Let's talk about what's happening here. We want to potentially build on concepts that we've introduced in our first solution because we know we can dive deeper because we made strong assumptions. And now our brain is flowing and really ready to get into those concepts in more depth. And the reason why we go back to the framework is we don't want to ignore it. Those concepts were important and would all help us get into that problem solving mode. And we introduce them because we believe in them. Now, you can also simply take the step in the transition statement of saying, you know, some of those initial concepts that I mentioned, we could talk a little bit more about like A, B, and C, if you don't want to dive deeper into your initial solution. But it's so important to take this step. Why? Because we don't want to stop talking. Our interviewer, Sue, she might just move on to the next question. That introduces a whole new level of ambiguity. Our brain is getting into the flow. We want to stay in that flow as much as possible. Almost always, it's easier to keep going once you're in that flow as opposed to introducing a new item, a new question. Item seven, interviewer adjustment. So a percentage of interviewers, 15%, 20% maybe, maybe more, maybe less, but right around that, you're gonna start with that clarifying transition statement saying that you're gonna clarify and your interviewer is just gonna shut you down. Say, nope, no questions, don't ask questions, I don't like questions, I've given you all the data, etc." So in that case, we're still going to use all of our transitions. We're just going to remove the space from many of them and the questioning component from many of them. What does that sound like? Instantly after your interviewer, let's call him Bob, states that, you change your approach to say, a few items I would be considering are, then you state your clarifying questions more as thought process, then you transition into the framework, but after you simply pick, you'd say, let's, well, I'm gonna start by focusing in on risk, then state your assumptions and solve. Then when you get to the end, you would use that classic transition statement because you've worked your way through the entire answer. I know that there's a lot to consider here, but transitions and space will make a huge difference in your interview success with Google, especially in these hypothetical questions. Really take the time to build in space, build in great transitions. It will be massively impactful to your success. Good luck.